getting a lot of man-to-man -man coverage right now. I wouldn't be surprised if you see some sort of a getting a lot of man-to-man -man coverage right now. I wouldn't be surprised if you see some sort of a double move, like a hitch and go or a slant and go. Try and get them a, a, a deep conversion down the field in the passing game. Now you can feel the tempo picking up. SMU brings five. Pass is complete to Swope. He looks for the seven, and he's got the touchdown. 29 yards for Ryan Swope, his first touchdown of the year, 17th of his career. And I just mentioned Ryan that SMU's playing a lot of man-to-man -man defense. You're going to see his slant route come in from here, and I'm drawing circles when I shouldn't be. But if, <laughs> once he makes that safety miss, once Ryan Smith can't, make the tackle it's just straight from the end zone just the quick slant he found the crease and the a and fans love it and the extra point Bertolette missed a field goal already today and he will slide this one inside the right up ring. so Manziel hooks up for the touchdown pass with his big senior wide receiver out of Austin Texas and the Aggies have taken a 7-0 lead on the Mustangs. Support the puck. Do I have to tell you this? Now we're getting killed on the board. Hello. This is your yeah. territory, Grimson. Do your job. Grimson. Hello? Oh, hi, honey. What? Al? All right. The itsy bitsy spider. Climbed up the water spout. Down came the rain and washed the spider out. Out came the sun and dried up all the rain. And the itsy bitsy spider climbed up the spout again. I love you, Daddy. I love you too, sweetheart. Hey, it's my girl. Daughter. Love. Pass it on. A message from the Foundation for a Better Life. One in six people in America may not know where their next meal is coming from. Yet our nation has more than enough food to feed them all. Join the Fox Sports team as we support Feeding America, a nationwide network of food banks helping provide meals through pantries, soup kitchens, and shelters. Go to feedingamerica.org slash foxsports to learn how you can help solve hunger in your community. Together, we're Feeding America. Ryan Swope, the former high school running back, now a Bolitnikoff Award candidate. He completes the drive of 61 yards. It took him eight plays, just over two minutes, and they open the scoring here in Dallas. And, Ron, what SMU does is they run a lot of these fire zones like the Pittsburgh Steelers do. You're going to see Bo Barnes try and drop out in coverage, but what it turns into, if we can freeze it right there, is man-to-man -man coverage between Ryan Swope and the safety from SMU who's in the back. And if he makes that guy miss, it's to the end zone. And what you're depending on in those situations, Ron, is the pressure getting there before the quarterback gets an opportunity. But when they pick it up, you really put those safeties in some predicaments. Well, Tom Mason stressed that in practice on, on Thursday and yesterday. Their defensive coordinator for SMU said you've got to look at your keys and keep your eyes open. And a and now with a 7 nothing lead. There's a good look at Cole Lofton. The senior who's got three kick returns this year averages just over 19 yards a return. And Bertolette set to kick it away. Virtually no win here inside the stadium. And Lofton takes it about the seven. Over the 20 to the 25, up to the 27-yard line. 
23 yards on the return. A good look at Ryan Swope. Let's check in with Desmond Purnell. Ron following that last scoring drive. Coach Sumlin went up to the Aggies wide out, and he told him that he wants to speed up the offense, but you guys have to make more plays downfield. Of course, there, were, there was that one drop pass that would have resulted in a first down. Coach Sumlin wants to speed up the tempo, but he wants his receivers to make more plays. Well, yeah, that's, that's what this offense is based on, and you go back to the Florida game. They snap the ball about every 20, 22 seconds. Hasn't been the case today. A little bit slower pace. Let's see if SMU can answer. Gilbert rifling the pass to Derek Thompson. Up over the 35 to the 36-yard line. Pickup of nine on the play. Tony Hurd on the stop. And I couldn't agree with Desmond Moore, and I think that same conversation is going on on both sidelines. Mm -hmm. You're getting a lot of man-to-man -man coverage, and that's just you against the guy in front of you. You can win those battles. You really can help out your offense. And right now, I mean, these cornerbacks are... are are doing a good job of, of, of sticking to these wide receivers, not allowing them to get away. After SMU, you got to get your wide receivers involved. Coming into this game, Zach Lyon, their running back, was the second leading receiver. AM, they bring five. Gilbert steps up away from the pressure, tries to dump it to Johnson, throws it a little too hard. And isn't that what June Jones was telling us? Sometimes he throws the ball and doesn't pass the ball. Gets a little too much mustard on it. And, and that's what he, and this is a ball, if he just puts a little air under it, uh, allows Darius Johnson to run under this, this could have turned into a touchdown. Both Aggie defenders come to him, and you see he throws a direct pass with a velocity on it, and, and that's one of the things he'll learn, and he's rusty, Ron. He hadn't played a lot of football. He got hurt in 2010, didn't play. So this is his first time, his second, third game in live action, and he'll get better because he has yes. all the tools. Oh, yes. The skill set is there. Well, now they face third down, and it is short. Have not gotten a first down today. And I don't think he's gonna, they're going to get it here. Didn't get it. Kept driving the feet. Needed to get up to about the 37-yard line. And depending on the spot from up here, it doesn't look like they got it. Now they're going to have to measure, and that's a pretty good spot they got. I don't think... Uh, Coach Snyder, the defensive coordinator there on the left, I don't think he's thrilled with that spot. <laughs> And they'll bring the chains in. June Jones had a great relationship with Gail Gilbert. Obviously, Garrett's dad. Gail played in five Super Bowls, and it'll be a first down. <laughs> that was, that's a good spot if you're SMU. <laughs> that's a great spot if you're SMU. Well, we are in Dallas. So we are <laughs> at go. SMU. Well, there's more Aggie fans here than Mustang fans. <laughs> this is kind of like a Texas A&M home game. And Jared Gilbert will bring him to the line of scrimmage inside of seven and a half to play here in the second. From the 37-yard line. Two wide receivers on either side for the Mustangs. Here comes some pressure. Zach Lyon picks it up, throws incomplete. Pass intended for Johnson. And this Aggie defense is bringing a lot more, a lot of, a lot of stunts and, and dogs and linebacker blitzes up front, which they didn't do last week. If Garrett can just find his wideouts and a lot of man-to-man -man coverage and they can make a guy miss, I mean, there's some big plays to be had on this football field today. Well, it's second down and 10. From the 37-yard line. And again, here comes some pressure. Zach Lyon doing a nice job picking it up. They whip it out to the far side of the field. And it is caught by Keenan Holman. Pickup of nine on the play. Holman's second reception of the day. And we talked in the open about Zach Lyon's ability to really step up and be a part of the pass protection. And you saw that right there, having to catch that blitz and linebacker off the edge. Allowed his quarterback time to complete that pass. But again, you have to keep challenging these receivers. Keenan Holman, if he can make that one Texas a and cornerback miss, there are some big plays to be had. SMU one for six on third down. They need one. Gilbert, rifle on the pass, incomplete. Intended for Holman again. Are you surprised they throw the ball on third down and short when you have a back like Zach Line in the backfield? Well, they haven't had a lot of success running the football today. 
And I think June understands that they're at a disadvantage from a manpower standpoint, from a size and strength standpoint. So, you know, those little hitch routes, those quick three-step throws are just like runs. You know, Tom Brady does a magnificent job of utilizing that short passing game to kind of supplement some of the running game right. that they don't have. And Chase over. This will be his sixth part of the afternoon. And it's a wobbly putt at the 18-yard line. Not a whole lot going on. 36 yards on the kick, two on the return. When we return, we'll take you to our Fox College Football studio for a halftime preview with Kevin Frazier and Marcus Allen. Autoimmune disorders occur when the body's immune system attacks its own tissue. Fox Sports and Johns Hopkins Medicine have teamed up to fight autoimmune disease. Please donate by visiting hopkinsmedicine.org slash fox. Kevin Frazier, Mark Allen in our college football studio. And coming up at the half, Marcus, we talk about Lane Kiffin and the USC Trojans as they get ready for their first real test. A hostile crowd, conference opponent, big game for them. All right, plus top 15 upset and... And he's up to Tex-Mex. And you can see the from around the country here in Dallas. A&M leads it 7 to nothing. And Texas oh, A&M will have two. the football at about the 22-yard line. Of course, A&M, one of the newest the members of the SEC. And, he's up to Tex and you can see what they've done so far. 13 rushes, 17 passes so far in the ballgame. Hey, Kevin Sutton says a lot of people think he's throwing around a lot and really don't. Manziel tucks it, stays on his feet. Gets it out to the near side, up over the 30 to the 32-yard line is Mike Evans. And you see a little bit of the improv improvisation by the redshirt freshman quarterback. Initial read wasn't there, didn't force it. But lose the Mustang defender and, and completes the pass on first down. Make something positive happen for his offense. Five catches for Evans. He had seven last week against Florida. Swope dropped it and then kicked it. <laughs> you don't see that very often. He's got some of the best hands on this football team. And there's a little frustration with Ryan. You know, he yeah. even though he's caught a touchdown today, he's used to getting more targets. He's used to getting more opportunities. And they've been few and far between, and for him to drop an easy one like that, that's frustrating for him. Let's watch for Mike Evans on this play. Over 100 yards receiving already. Rifle in the pass, incomplete. Pass was intended for Wachiku. Zoma Wachiku, a three-year starter, looking for his first reception of the year. Cliff Kingsbury, I think, has got to be a little frustrated. Still positive. You know, it's okay. Team faces third down. They need 10. They're three of eight on third down so far today. SMU showing only three, and they bring three. Manziel, plenty of time all day. Still on his feet, and he's going to take off. They miss the first tackle, and he just ducks his head. Let's see where the officials mark it. The official fell down on the far side. 
And where they are putting the foot right now, that'll be good enough for a first down. What a gutty performance by Manziel. And he's extending plays, and Johnny's running around kind of playing backyard football. But I tell you this, the official gets taken out on the sideline. For him to come and understand and know where that spot was, I mean, that's a tremendous effort by the referee. That was almost a horse collar by Jagera Davis, and now another official came over, and they marked it about a half a yard short. So he did not get the first down, and again, it is fourth down. It's a learning process, though, for, for Johnny Manziel. It's a tough offense to learn. Here is Ryan Smith standing back. This is a better punt. Big hop at about the 15-yard line. It'll get inside the 10. Hops back over the 10 to the 11. Good punt of 47 yards. The Mustangs will have it with 5.24 left in the half. Support the puck. Do I have to tell you this? And we're getting killed on the board. Oh. This is your yeah. territory, Grimson. Do your job. Grimson. Hello? Oh, hi, honey. What? Al? All right. Fitzy Bitsy Spider. Climbed up the water spout. Down came the rain and washed the spider out. Out came the sun and dried up all the rain. And the itsy bitsy spider climbed up the spout again. I love you, Daddy. I love you too, sweetheart. Hey, it's my girl. Love. Pass it on. A message from the Foundation for a Better Life. For athletes, when the game ends or the finish line is crossed, the fight is over. But for nearly 24 million Americans suffering from autoimmune diseases, their fight continues every day against their own body's immune system. Johns Hopkins Medicine has been at the forefront of groundbreaking research into autoimmune disorders like multiple sclerosis and rheumatoid arthritis. Fox Sports asks you to join the fight against autoimmune diseases. Please donate by visiting hopkinsmedicine.org slash fox. Bring a bunch of gray sun to me and, and just dump a whole bunch of emotional manure on my friends. The League premieres Thursday, October 11th at 1030 on FX. No one should be afraid to go to school. But the scary reality is, one out of every four kids is bullied. What seems like just making fun of someone can lead to depression, anxiety, and even suicide, which is never the answer. Just because someone looks different does not mean they are weak. Bullying your classmates at school, that's weak. Be a leader. Stand up for others. Stand up against bullying. Join us here at Fox Sports to help stomp out bullying at school and online. Fox College Football is presented by Academy Sports and Outdoors. Right stuff, low price, every day. And by GEICO. 15 minutes can save you 15% or more on car insurance. Visit us at GEICO.com. And here it is, y'all. Heisman Trophy winner, Dope Walker. You know, history here at SMU football is pretty good. Three straight bowl games. This is a program that struggled for 25 years before June Jones took over. Garrett Gilbert and company have five minutes and 24 seconds to try to get something going. They're going to try the run game from the 11. They may get up to the 12. Jonathan Stewart on the tackle. Only 65 yards prior to that play for this Mustang offense. We were expecting a little more from them, I think. Well, they've had their opportunities. Uh, the quarterback, Garrett Gilbert, has missed a couple chances to make and convert some big plays. And you are not going to get a lot of them against a top defense like this A&M Aggie unit, and when you get chances, you have to take advantage of them. I didn't anticipate they'd have a lot of success running the football, right. and thus far, they have not. Peter Holman goes in motion. Thompson and Johnson on the left side. 
And he looks left, and he'll just swing it out. Zach Lyons' third reception of the afternoon, and he gets up to about the 14-yard line. Pickup of about three. Tremaine Jacobs coming up from that quarterback spot. Good look at Jacobs, junior college guy, turned down Alabama and Tennessee to play for Mark Snyder in Texas A&M. Covington, Louisiana is where the young man's there from. We used to have training camp there when I was at Tulane. All I remember is it was really hot. That's why when you looked at Covington, I noticed you started shaking. <laughs> Third down, they need seven. Let's see if AM brings it. And they only rush four. Gilbert rolls out of the pocket. Darius Johnson cannot bring it in. And he'll have to kick it away again. But we do have a penalty flag thrown back at about the eight-yard line. It will be against SMU holding. That's only the second penalty. Oh, number 48 on our penalty. The time. Fourth down. And even though you got that holding call, I think the offensive line has done a decent job. They're a really young unit. Seven out of their top ten are either freshmen freshman or sophomores. So a lot of inexperience up there, but right now they're competing. Well, now Dustin Harris standing just over the 50-yard line. They're expecting great field position from this punt by Chase Hover. They're going to have to ice his leg down after this game. <laughs> And he gets a nice spiraling kick. Harris has to back up to the 38-yard line. Gets by the first wave. Gets over the 50. Gets into SMU territory. Down to the 48-yard line. Tonight, college football returns to Fox as Aaron Andrews, Eddie George, and Joey Harrington get you ready for kickoff with the Fox College Saturday pregame show. Then Heisman Trophy frontrunner Matt Barkley and second-ranked USC head to Palo Alto for their toughest test yet. They can't take on the 21st ranked Stanford Cardinal and the Pac-12 opener for both teams. Coverage on Fox College football begins tonight at 7 p.m. Eastern, 4 p.m. Pacific. Ron, have you gotten a chance to take check out that new state of the art? Yes. Studio we have, it is nice. I like it. Makes Kevin Frazier look good. Manziel flushed out of the pocket. Johnny Manziel's got 15 yards to go, and he scores. Texas 48 yards for Manziel, his longest rush of his career and his first ru or second rushing touchdown. And that'll look really good on that big screen in the studio. The spark plug, Mr. Excitement. This is the added dimension that he brings to this Aggie offense that they really haven't had with Kevin Sumlin everywhere that he's gone. He's had a quarterback that just makes good decisions, is active with the football. Never a guy as athletic as Johnny Manziel. The sky's the limit for this young man as he continues to grow and improve in this offense. Well, he made the right decision there to just take off. Davis Plowman with the extra point, and it is blocked. Still on the ground. And they finally blow it dead. Margus Hunt, another block. He blocked two extra points against his Aggie team last year. No, he may play 10 years in the National Football League and just, you know, just be an extra points block specialist. Seventh PAT block for the big guy from Estonia. He's right there, and you see him. He's going to get some push, and he's so tall. If he gets any push and gets those right. hands up, he's a factor. Nine field goals blocked in his career. Seven PATs blocked. Look at the, look at the size of him get up. <laughs> And if you're Kevin Sumlin, I, I know he's frustrated as all oh, outdoors yeah. because, you know, all week long they've preached you can't let Marcus Hunt get any penetration on field goals or extra points. And there you see what he has done. First and block field goals, second and blocks extra points, 16 total blocks, third in the all-time history books of the FBS. And there's a lesson to be learned here for other teams in college football. If you want an extra point field goal block specialist, travel to Estonia. There you go and get a shot putter <laughs> and a discus thrower. Kudos over to Johnny Manziel, the freshman out of Kerrville Tyvee High School, just outside of San Antonio, about an hour outside. This freshman has started quarterback for Texas A&M since 1944. He gives you that added dimension because now as he heads into the SEC, you've got to be cognizant of the fact that this kid can take off at any time. And I mean, you talk about his high school career, Ryan, 150 total touchdowns. 
while a quarterback in high school. And 76 passing touchdowns is impressive, but the 74 rushing touchdowns right. are what makes him that dual threat. And he showcased that ability. I mean, when he broke that second tackle and maintained his balance, most quarterbacks will get tackled right there. I mean, an outstanding talent that they have in Texas, at Texas A&M. Well, he threw his first touchdown pass earlier today, hooked it up with Ryan Swope. Now he's got his second rushing touchdown of his career. And the Aggies, though, are up 13 nothing. SMU 326 to play with here before quarter number two comes to an end. Pope and Lofton are set to receive the kick. And the sidewinder will find the core band. And you just talk about the athleticism and the balance, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and Ryan Smith will end up on the, the comedy reel for that one, but watch him able to fight through the leg tackle. Most quarterbacks go down right there. Only guys with tremendous talent with elite right. athleticism and balance are able to break through that tackle and just think he's only a freshman. It's going to get bigger. It's going to get stronger. It's going to really start to develop into his body. I mean, I think he has a chance to be a really... Good player for this Aggie program. He has 217 of the 230 yards of offense for Texas A&M. And Gilbert's got some time. He's flushed out of the pocket, looks for a block, gets hit, doesn't get up to the 25-yard line. And he barely got back to the line of scrimmage before Tony Hurd made the stop. They're going to call it officially a loss of one. I love this Tony Hurt. He just makes plays all over the field. They got to find room of him out there. And they wanted to get the young man from Missouri City, Texas, onto the field. They say he's instinctive and makes plays every day. One of the words that Mark Snyder, defensive coordinator, yeah. said referring to Tony Hurt. Clock running inside of 250. Gilbert looks, throws out of the flat, short hop. Pass was intended for Holman. Gilbert now just 9 of 19 for 51 yards. And he's been a little off. Uh, Kenan Holman's actually open. He throws a little behind him, a little low. And you can see Garrett's just really not in a rhythm. You can see right. just a little off today, a little too long, a little too far outside, a little too low, a little too hard. You know, at halftime, June Jones is going to pull his quarterback to the side and say, Garrett, we just need you to settle down. Things are open. Just take your time. Just make the throw. And it's third down and 11. SMU has converted only once on third down today. Gilbert looks. They wanted to pick their spots to go deep. Here is one of them, and it's going to be intercepted at the 27-yard line. Tremaine Jacobs with his first interception in an AM uniform. And you mentioned he chose the Aggies over Alabama. He looked like one of those Alabama defensive backs. Did a good job of playing the football. And what I like is he really high points the football. I mean, he's going to go jump and make sure that the wide receiver doesn't have an opportunity to get his hands on that football. You think Holman should have played a little more defense on that? I do. And, you know, in his defense, it was a ball thrown down the field. He never right. really had a chance to get there, but that play doesn't really hurt SMU. That's a third and long. That's just like a punt. Let's see if Texas A&M can take advantage of it. Plenty of time in their offense to score 226. And the officials talking to the coaching staff of Texas A&M on the far side. Kevin Sumlin he wants an explanation of something. And I think they've got that cleared up. And again, it was one of those double numbers. Right, I know. <laughs> Tremaine Jacobs has wears seven, and his helmet came off. We were making sure that he was on the sideline and wasn't in the game. And Manziel goes back to work. Plenty of time. Flushed out of the pocket. Ball is tipped up in the air and incomplete. SMU had a golden opportunity for the interception. Jagera Davis with the pressure. The gift and the curse of having a young, athletic quarterback that can make plays with his feet. A lot of times, Cliff Kingsbury wants him just to get the football mm -hmm. to our wide outs, but he does kind of rely on that athleticism too often, in my opinion, but he'll get better. And he tucks it, and he takes off again. 
looking for the sideline, and he makes the corner up over the 35 to the 36-yard line. Coming up at halftime in our college football studio with Kevin Frazier and Marcus Allen, number one Bama in Fayetteville. And of course, we'll talk about things going on at the horseshoe. What a first half with Johnny Manziel. Of course, and again, he had a great first half last year. We've got a, last week, we've got an SMU player down. Yeah, it looks like it is Jagera Davis. That'll give AM a chance to go to the far side of the field and talk things over. With two minutes and ten seconds left to play here in the half. Let's take a look and see what happened to Jagarit on this play. Looks like he steps on his own teammate, Ryan yeah. Smith's heels. Davis on the Butkus watch list. Second team conference USA in 2011 was first team back in 2010. And he is up, limping a little bit. And chasing around Johnny Manziel can't be yeah. <laughs> that much fun. I mean, he'll make you blow a tire. I mean, the, the angle of Ryan Smith right there was outrun by the athleticism of Johnny Manziel. He's one of those guys, Ryan, doesn't look fast until you're trying to catch him. That's exactly right. It's <laughs> a good point. Only 67 yards for SMU in this game. And he's got a whistle on a penalty flag. Texas A&M, 239 yards. False start. Number two. Well, that is the fourth penalty on Texas A&M so far today. That's something that they really worked on in spring and also in the fall practices is try to correct the penalties and the mistakes that they made last season. And it is third down, they need six. Three-man pressure, Manziel plenty of time. Now he's flush, looking, throwing, pass is caught. First down, Texas A&M. Mike Evans on the reception. And the level of difficulty for a right-handed quarterback running to his left under pressure to be able to have the accuracy that he had on that football is very rare. If you throw the football right-handed, go outside in your yard and run to the left and yeah. try, try, try and make this throw. With a guy that's six foot, 240 pounds bearing down on you. And Taylor Reed is down. So two of the starting linebackers getting injured on back-to-back -back plays. <laughs> Taylor Reed is a guy that when he was being recruited in high school, they said we High school coach told him SMU's recruiting you. He goes, where is it? <laughs> he had no idea where the Mustangs were. Got to meet the coaching staff, realized what they were all about, said he wanted to be part of something special, knew he could. Went to the same high school, by the way, as Kristen Michael, the Texas A&M running back, who was suspended for today's game. And he's a good player for this defense. 101 tackles last year. He was actually the returning leader in tackles for this defense. And Jer to Gary Davis, who was injured to play before, and Taylor Reed are the best two defenders on this Mustang defense. They go out on back-to-back -back plays, both trying to chase down yep. elusive Aggie quarterback Johnny Manziel. And they came here together, these two guys. In fact, when Taylor Reed, who's on your left, came here, he was about 185 pounds. He's 240 now. Training table. I'll tell you, when you, you know, I spent some time with him on Thursday, and he was so looking forward to this game, not only because he thought he would see his former high school teammate and Michael, but he liked the challenge. And June Jones really believes both of these guys can play on Sundays. And Tom Mason, when we spoke to him this week, he really said he challenged to Garrett Davis and Taylor Reed because he thought they had to do a good job of tackling these Aggie right. backs. Now, you mentioned Kristen Michael isn't playing, but you know they've really negated outside of their quarterback Absolutely. scramble uh, Texas a and running game. One minute and 46 seconds left in the half. Taylor Reed is off the field. If we get any information updating his condition, we'll pass it on to you. And Manziel again from the shotgun. Just a quick handoff. Just when we talked about their run game, 
Ben Molina will get the first down, picking up 11 on the carry. Cameron Rogers on the stop. And we've got a couple of more guys down there. And you mentioned it early on in the first quarter, part of this Texas A&M offense and Kevin Sumlin, you just keep pounding them and you wear on these team. It's 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 warm here, but I don't know if it's that warm, but it seems like they are getting worn down just a little and, bit. And what it what happens, Ron, is when you have an offensive line that as good as the Aggie one, it's just a war of attrition. You know, you may make some stops against them earlier, but they're so well conditioned. You know, Larry Jackson, the strength coach at AM, right. does a great job of having those guys prepared to to take 70, 80 snaps a game. And they just wearing you. Those big bodies get on you in the first quarter, and you're getting off of blocks, making tackles. And you know, at the second quarter, you're not getting off the block. And the third quarter, you're going backwards. Now, Kevin Pope is the one who's down on the field, and June Jones watches intently in light of what happened to Devin Walker last week. And we'll get a look at it again. And it is right there, Kevin Pope. And both players are still down. Both of them are moving, though. And Pope's able to sit up, and that's a good sign. Jim Jones has to be very pleased with his offense or his defense I should say here in the first 30 minutes offense hasn't been able to really kick it in gear and SMU plays eight linebackers like all eight of those guys play a lot of snaps but mm -hmm. you know four of the eight have gotten banged up in the, in the last four plays and Rogers is up so that's a good sign senior out of Abilene Texas Kevin Pope out of Mount Enterprise Texas And Taylor Reed and Garrett Davis are back into the lineup for SMU, so they're okay. First and ten for Texas A&M. Ball's on the 41-yard line. Minute and a half to play here in the opening half. Manziel across the middle. Pass is caught. Ryan Smoke with the reception. That'll be his third catch of the day. Of course, he already has a touchdown catch. 15 yards in a first down. And they kick the offense into another gear. Manziel. Throws this one up for grabs, and it is incomplete. That was one of those plays that could have been a complete disaster. Now they throw the flag. The officials talked about it, and then they finally dropped the penalty flag. Well, I think they're going to pick this up. He did have a wide receiver. And our referee again, Penn Wagers. Rounding. There was a receiver in the area. This is. Yeah, you're right, partner. Second down. And he's, he has a guy right here. It looks like he's throwing away, but you see the AM wide receiver is standing right there, so that is not intentional ground. That's the correct He call. was throwing it away, though. <laughs> they were so amazed that he didn't get sacked. I know. He as <laughs> you know, got him out of the sack. Seventh play of the drive. Here comes pressure. Manziel reads it into the flat. Incomplete. Pass intended for Evans. The redshirt freshman already with a big day. Six catches, 123 yards. Kenneth Acker was on the coverage. 114 to play in the half. And Johnny will learn if you're going to make that throw from the far hash to the wide side of the field, have to get those feet set and really follow through to get the necessary velocity to get the football there. And third down, they need 10. SMU drops eight in the coverage. Manziel feeling the pressure from Marcus Hunt. Throwing across his body again. Touchdown, Texas A&M. <laughs> Uzoma Wachiku, his first catch of the season and his first touchdown of the year, 26 yards. 
And good to see who's on with back on the field. A guy that has 12 career touchdown catches for this Aggie team. And Mr. Excitement is at it again. You do a great job with that defensive front of putting pressure on him, and he escapes it. And then he's getting better and better when he's outside the pocket of looking to make throws down the field. Mansell, his second touchdown pass of the afternoon. And the extra point by Burlett. And it is good. And he was almost a veteran wide receiver, so he understands that I have a young quarterback, so I might not get the football initially, which he doesn't get. But when he sees Johnny Menzel scramble, you see him move up the field, and those scramble rules come into play. And when you have mm -hmm. veteran wide receivers, they don't quit. You know, a lot of times those young guys, they don't get the ball initially. They'll just sit back and watch and become a spectator. Ozama's been around. He's played with some good quarterbacks, Ryan Tannehill and some of those guys who's athletic. So he knows if he continues to find and work and try and get open, that when those guys scramble, they can get him the football, and it results in an Aggie touchdown. Now watch Goo, a three-year starter for this Texas A&M team. It took him eight plays to go 73 yards and just 123 on the clock. I mean, think about it. We were scoreless after the first quarter, and now it's 20 to nothing, Texas A&M, and Manziel on the left. What a job he has done so far today. Manziel, 13 to 26, 202 yards throwing the football. And then you throw in a bunch of yards rushing, about 82 yards rushing. I think he should be SEC Offensive Player of the Year. <laughs> I, to him now. I know I know a guy down in Knoxville Attention named Tyler Bray, Bray who hopes that Johnny Manziel doesn't get offensive SEC receiver. offensive Holes player of the year. Yeah. And what an exciting game this afternoon too, Tennessee and Florida. And a great Pac-12 action here on Fox and, and all our sister channels. But college football is going to be so exciting. Yeah, absolutely. Southern Cal is playing tonight against mm -hmm. Stanford. And I did that game a few years ago and their first Stanford test of the year. Yeah. 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 Fun game to do. I just love football. Yeah, I agree. With one minute and three seconds left, SMU will have the ball on the 25-yard line. Touchback. First down and ten. Coming up at halftime in our Fox College Football Number Studio with Kevin Frazier line. and Marcus Allen. Number one, Bama in Fayetteville, and a thriller at the horseshoe. We'll tell you more about that with Kevin and Marcus coming up in just a couple minutes. I bet Marcus is excited to see his Trojans tonight. Oh, yeah. Their first test of the season. Probably going to sneak out of the studio and go see that. <laughs> 308 yards for Texas A&M in this ballgame. Only 67 total yards offense for SMU. You, you, you talked about the shutout against Stephen F. Austin. They put up a lot of points in that football game, but you look at the numbers, they didn't do all that well offensively. And it's going to struggle the early part of the season for this SMU offense. And now let's go back to the run game, see if we can get anything there, and they get a first down. Zach Line prop finally brought down by Stephen Terrell. Pick up a 16 on the play, one of the longer plays of the afternoon for SMU. And you get to see some of Zach Line's ability when he gets in the open field. This time Gilbert looking, getting wrapped up. Throws a wild pass incomplete. You know, going back to Zach Ron, you know, a lot of people don't know he's third in the NCAA right now for rushing touchdowns behind only Monty Ball and Denard Robinson, the running back from Wisconsin and quarterback from Michigan, respectively. So he's a very accomplished player. Last year against his Aggie defense, he ran for 128 yards, but they're not as good up front. They lost a lot of starts in that offensive line. They're still a work in That's progress. Right. But if you're SMU, this early season schedule has just been treacherous. Baylor, Texas A&M have TCU coming in two weeks. They just want to get to their conference USA schedule and be relatively healthy. Pass is complete. Another first down as they stop the clock. Nice job by Keenan Holman stepping out of bounds. The junior out of Beaumont, Texas. Still time to work with, 31 seconds. It would be such an emotional boost, I think, for SMU, considering just a moment ago they had less than 70 yards to get any kind of points on the board. Here comes pressure. The quick out pass is complete to Thompson. They'll step out of bounds again at the 31-yard line. Jacobs on the coverage, but not before he picks up 10, and they move the chains again. And SMU huddles up offensively, so in these kind of situations, they're in that old-school, pure two-minute offense where Garrett Gilbert's calling a lot of this stuff. 
from the line of mm -hmm. scrimmage. And these throws he's completing have been open the entire game. Jim will tell him that at halftime. This time he floats left. They try to throw the little dump screen off to Zach Line, and it's tipped incomplete. Kevin Stansbury was right there. And this was ill advised by Garrett, you know. Rich Rodriguez used to always tell me, don't let someone else's mistake become your problem. You know, AM did a good job of sniffing out that screen. He probably just wants to throw that football in the right. ground, ensure that it's not a turnover. 21 seconds left in the half. Keenan Holman goes wide to the right. One of three wide receivers on the right side. Four man pressure. Gilbert fires to Darius Johnson a little behind him incomplete. Coverage was by Tony Hurd. He was there. And June is telling his quarterback, you got to settle down. That's about the fourth opportunity that they've had. Darius Johnson does a good job. He's going to come from the outside. And if he puts that ball and locates it better, Darius Johnson probably scores. Yeah, absolutely, he does. No, he knows it. And it's third down and 10. 15 seconds left in the half. The deep out incomplete overthrows his intended receiver. Keenan Holman again. Fourth down, Miles will go for it. Only 10 seconds left to play in the half. Drew Jones talking it over with Gilbert, and he'll come back out. SMU able to get over the century mark in total offense here in the first half. Fourth down and 10, and a whistle and a timeout called by SMU. SMU, first timeout of the half, 30 seconds. You know, you look at this Garrett Gilbert, this is his fifth offensive scheme in six years. That's tough. This college football season, Fox Sports is proud to partner with Prostate Cancer Foundation. Now check that, we're gonna do the college football social poll. Who's the best team to get dropped from this week's AP rankings? Arkansas, Nebraska, Wisconsin, or Oklahoma State? Do I get a vote? Yeah, you get a vote. Go ahead. Yeah, considering Oklahoma State put up 65 today, probably Oklahoma State. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'll go with Mike Gundy's guys. <laughs> this is the eighth play of the drive, the longest drive of the day for SMU. Kevin Sumlin's squad leading it. However, 20 to nothing with 10 seconds left in the half. And they will attempt the field goal. It'll be 48 yards. Chase Hover. Ball's down. Sliding to the right, and he's not going to get it. He had the distance, but the torch was off a little bit. What's the second most important? Scholarship that you give Field goal right kickers, on. buddy. That's right, brother. Field goal kickers. That yeah. hurts. If you're SMU, that's got to be demoralizing because you started to finally move the football. And I'm not blaming either kicker for their misses, but after I find a quarterback, if I ever become a head coach in college, the second most important scholarship I can give is a kicker. Now the 48-yarder is a little bit out of his range. Longest coming in today was 43, and AM will just take a knee. So Texas AM, after going scoreless in quarter number two, puts up 20, or scoreless in quarter number one, puts up 20 in quarter number two, 308 yards for the ball game. And Kevin Sumlin standing by with Desmond Purnell. Coach Sumlin, Johnny Menzel, only making his second and career start, but you really can't tell by the half he's had. Assess his play through two quarters. Well, you know, he's made plays with his feet just like he did a week ago. He's a great athlete. Uh, might need to sit in there a little bit more and throw it. He's made some good throws. You know, that's part of the 
part of the, uh, his game is moving around and throwing on the run. But uh, I think the story of, of the first half is our defensive play. What have you guys defensively been able to do to take Zach Line out of the game, a guy that had over 120 yards against Texas A&M last year? Well, I, you know, he, he, I think our front's playing well. You know, Coach Snyder's given him a bunch of different looks. Uh, you know, we, we, our, our front's been playing very well, and we've been pressuring the quarterback when we had opportunity. So, you know, we, we, we continue to play defense like that. We'll, we'll feed off of that, and they've gotten us the ball back. We've been able to capitalize. We appreciate the time, Coach. All right, thank you. All right, his team leads at the half, 20 to nothing. Now we take you to Los Angeles studio for our Fox College football halftime. Here's Kevin Frazier and Marcus Allen. Ron, thanks a lot, and welcome to the Fox College football halftime. And Marcus, you look at Texas A&M and you see the difference, the power. As Ron mentioned, over 300 yards of offense and the tough defense. Size, speed, strength, overwhelming SMU at this point. Uh, and, and the thing that's really alarming, only one first down uh, yeah. conversion for, uh, third down conversion rather, for SMU. I mean, you, I don't care, Kevin, what level you play on. You will never win any game converting one third down. All right, let's jump right now to the top of the heap and check in on the number one team in the nation, the Alabama Crimson Tide, visiting Arkansas. And before the game, John L. Smith announced that Tyler Wilson would not play in this game, and he's dealing with the head injury from last week. And none of that mattered to Alabama, because you can't slow down that Alabama offense. Firing on all cylinders, running the ball, throwing the ball. A.J. McCarron is looking great. Alabama has won its last 20 SEC openers. And uh, by the way, lots of folks talking on Twitter. What's trending right now? Well, they're talking about the situation with Arkansas. And Rachel Tyre says, hey, by the way, I'm glad we're not playing Tyler Wilson today for the sake of our season. He doesn't need any Alabama hits today. Hashtag good decision. All right, let's move on and talk about another quality quarterback. Geno Smith, number nine, West Virginia, taking on James Madison. Easy money there. Geno Smith completed nearly 90% of his passes against Marshall. He's picked up where he left off, and that's why you love him, Marcus. Stephen Bailey, former running back. When he gets in the open field, he's tough to bring down. 14-0 Mountaineers up early on James, Mount, uh, James Madison. Meanwhile, here's a quarterback you may not have seen before. From Louisville, Teddy Bridgewater, the sophomore, is the real deal. 16 of 19, 218 yards in the first half, three TDs. This Louisville team could make some noise in the national picture. They're up 36 to 7. And back to Tyler Wilson. You know, look, he wanted to play. And if you look back a year ago and you think about this Alabama Arkansas game, you would think that, wow, this is going to be a big, big game. But without Tyler Wilson and without Bobby Petrino, different story. But it brings us to our gratuitous list of the top five quarterbacks in the nation right now. We know Matt Barkley would be number one. Marcus on your list. Geno Smith. <laughs> Tyler Wilson, then Tyler Bray down in Tennessee, and finally Braxton Miller. I want to go back to Geno Smith, though. I, I think this guy is the real deal. And he says, don't call him a runner. Well, what's not to like about him? I mean, he is, you know, you hate to say athlete, Kevin, because mm -hmm. that's sort of code word for he can run, but he can't throw. But not the case with Geno Smith. He can do both. He is athletic, as we talked about. But you know what? He has... Great touch on his ball. On the run, I think he's the best at throwing the ball, but he has great touch. Reminds me a lot of Joe Montana. Catchable balls. Doesn't have to fire it in there. And the other great asset that he has, he has the ability, Kevin, to broken play to make something happen. Here, as you see right here, the running back goes the wrong direction, but he doesn't panic. And what he does is we talk about the athleticism. He makes something happen, something out of nothing. He has that kind of ability, and this is why he's such a, uh, a great Heisman candidate. I, listen, I love Geno Smith. I think he's a great player. On your list, I did not see Colin Klein from Kansas State. Now, I think the kid deserves some consideration. Why didn't he make your list? I love those guys. They're pr productive. I think they're very good players, but I just don't see them as my top five guys just yet. But you never know. If they keep playing well, they may better get there, Kev. Maybe they'll play their way on to Marcus's list. Yeah, okay, Colin Klein, okay. you'll get a chance to see him tonight, the guy who Marcus left off his list, the senior and the Wildcats. Host North Texas kickoff is at 7 Eastern, 4 Pacific. Right here. 
Meanwhile, football really an afterthought at Tulane as the team and the Green Wave community is still trying to just come to grips with the injury to senior safety Devin Walker. Now Walker remains in a Tulsa hospital after fracturing his neck last week. According to the school, Walker is in stable condition, alert and responsive, and in good spirits. Now, if you would like to help, make sure you log on to www.tulane.edu. Devin Walker. Of course, our thoughts and prayers are with Walker. MU, 79 yards passing, and of course the Mustangs turn the ball over one time. And there's Manziel, Johnny Manziel, Johnny TV. <laughs> I tell you, this young man, his future is, uh, you know, you, you read articles about his father and what he said about him. He said, he goes into every football game saying, I'm going to win this game. And you like that attitude. And I asked, asked Cliff Kingsbury, I said, who has had more swagger, you when you were at Texas Tech? Or Johnny and I didn't get it out. He said, "Johnny, now Ron he didn't hesitate." Ron, Ron, I'm going to establish a rule. Yeah. For the rest of our team together, you're not allowed to say swag. <laughs> okay, that'll work. <laughs> that'll work. <laughs> and that'll be nine yards deep. SMU will get it on the 25. Let's check in with Desmond Purnell. Ron, if I could only use one word to describe SMU's offense, it would be pedestrian. They only have 111 total yards of offense. Garrett Gilbert has struggled so far. He hasn't found his rhythm, rhythm, and the Aggies front seven have had a lot to do with that. They've also taken away his security blanket and Zach line. If SMU is going to turn this into a ball game, Garrett Gilbert and his receivers have to make something happen downfield sooner than later. Well, they've got to make something happen, that's for sure. They've tried to go downfield on a number of occasions and have not been able to really connect the way they wanted to. And Gilbert, easy pass. Johnson, the intended receiver, and makes the catch. And Garrett has to be a little more efficient. Even on that throw, he aimed the football. He didn't just naturally let it go, and, and he tried to guide it. Wasn't, right. a, wasn't a nice spiral, still a little bit behind Darius, but a good catch. He needs to really just settle down. You know, he's very talented, can make all the throws. And just execute this offense because June Jones is doing a great job of calling plays, and there are guys open. Second reception for Johnson in this ball game. First down for the Mustangs. Very important opening drive. Zach Lyde takes a pop, but not before he gets up to the 44-yard line. That'll be a pickup of about five on the play. Jonathan Stewart on the tackle. And one of the things that I really like about Zach Lyon, Ron, is yards after contact. Yeah. When that first guy hits him, if it's a situation where he's in the open field, he always gets more positive yardage after that initial contact. Zach Lyon, whose brother Prescott is a freshman here at SMU. His brother was a parade All-American. Second down and short. The count of yardage June Jones likes to see. Again, Lyon tries to get a block. Only picks up a yard on the play. Again, Jonathan Stewart. They were just one block away from that becoming better yardage than what they got. And, and Zach Line is such a great story. A kid that didn't have any scholarship offers out of Michigan. You know, actually got a call from the PR guy for the Lions who called June Jones, and they offered him a scholarship here at SMU as a linebacker. Mm -hmm. And when he got here, they moved him over to running back, and the rest is history. June Jones, we spoke to him, he said, his best offense was when he had Craig Hayward at running back, and Zach Lyon allows him to do a lot of the same things exactly. now. When he was with the Falcons, well, it's third down and about three. Gilbert has time, floats the pass up, incomplete, intended for Jeremy Johnson. Johnson was there. I thought the ball was going to hang up a little bit more than it did. And again, Garrett has another opportunity to make a play. You know, Jeremy's open. You got to put a little more air under that football. Even if you underthrow that football, Ron, and Jeremy right. has to try and come back, he's more than likely going to get past the fence. That's a good point. And instead, SMU is going to have to kick it away. Eighth punt of the ball game. 
Here comes the pressure. Justin Harris at the 21. Fair catch. 35 yards on the kick. And then we'll have it when we get back. Here come the... Hey, yo. I lost audio. What happened? What? Oh, it better not be. What's going on? It's time to put a stop to this. Yeah, yay? The Coors Light Silver Bullet Pint. It's bigger, it's resealable, it's still the coldest. They call me Hollywood. They come to Big Show. Big Get out of my booth. Frost Brewed Coors Light, the world's most refreshing beer. Gotta support the puck. Do I have to tell you this? And no, we're getting killed on the board. Oh, this is your yeah. territory, Grimson. Do your job. Grimson. Hello? Hi, honey. What? Al? All right. The itsy bitsy spider. Climbed up the water spout. Down came the rain and washed the spider out. Out came the sun and dried up all the rain. And the itsy bitsy spider climbed up the spout again. I love you, Daddy. I love you too, sweetheart. Hey, it's my girl. Love. Pass it on. A message from the Foundation for a Better Life. Here's what the two quarterbacks have done so far today. You can see what Manziel has done. 202 yards. Here at Gilbert, 93 yards. Chris Manziel also has the 82 yards rushing. He also has a couple of touchdowns. 284 total yards in this ballgame for Manziel. Manham takes over at the 21-yard line. Early on here in quarter number three, along with has been pronounced on King Amran Thuman. The run game. Wrapped up at about the 23-yard line. Pick up the three is Ben Molina. You know, when you look at this Texas A&M offense, somebody who's very familiar with it is Jason Phillips. You can see the possessions of A&M in the first half. He's now one of the offensive coordinators for SMU. And as the run gets stuck, Again, Ben Molina. And SMU's defense, they were picking Jason's brain this whole week, saying, tell us about this Houston offense, because you were with them for a number of years. He was, and, and you know, I spoke to Coach Phillips yesterday. He says, I helped as much as I can. But at the end of the day, you still have to tackle. That's exactly right. Third down and five. Three-man pressure. Manziel pass, first down. Up to the 40 to the 43 yard line. Brian Swope again on the reception. That'll be his fourth catch of the afternoon. It covered 16. And watch the pass protection. You see how clean that pocket is. I mean, great job of that Aggie front of, of allowing their quarterback to be comfortable and step through and make the throw. And Garrett Davis almost got a hand on it. Here's Molina left side. Big chunk of yardage on first down. Picks up nine. And I told you, towards the end of the second quarter, Juan, this is going to become a war of attrition up right. front. You know, that Aggie offensive line is starting to wear. You see those SMU defenders, hands on their hips. You know, they're getting in their stands later and later. Yeah, I bet this tempo picks up offensive for a &M also. Second and short. First down, a swope again. And I think it was, we mentioned it earlier, but that was the biggest fear for this SMU defense, that AM would get on a roll and just run it right at them every time. Fresh set of downs for the Aggies. Three wide receivers to the left for Manziel. Manziel going deep. Looking for Mike Evans, and it's incomplete. 
Kenneth Acker was walking with him step for step. And that was a good job of pass coverage, almost making it impossible for Menzil to locate this football. If you see, he can, he's continually pushing Mike Evans closer and closer to that sideline. But the coaching point that I'd have for Johnny Menzil is Mike Evans 6'5". You know, you don't have to make that a perfect pass. If you throw that ball and allow him to go up and high point the football, mm -hmm. he has a huge advantage on almost every cornerback that he's going to encounter. Well, Chris Parks pulled up. He had a cramp, obviously, the junior out of Conroe, Texas. And while they tend to him, we'll take a timeout. 11 09 to play in quarter number three. The Aggies with a football in the lead. touched it. I touched the ball before it went out, coach. Come on, Alex. The ref did not call that. You gotta be kidding me, Alex. It's the championship game. Talk to him, coach. I touched it. It's their ball. Come on and do it right. Don't foul them when they inbound. Team on three. One, two, three. Yes. How's it going, Alex? Sorry, coach. Alex. Alex. Right. Good call. Sportsmanship. Pass it on. Good. Today, just one in every 100 Americans serves in our armed forces. They train, they deploy, they fight, they come home. And when they do, the mission continues offers them a challenge. To continue to serve, to continue to inspire, through community service fellowships and funding that lets veterans put their experience, leadership, and talents to work here at home. Across America, the mission continues. Veterans are making a difference in their communities and in their own lives. Now they can find the same sense of purpose that they experienced in uniform, and their dedication and effort can lead to new careers, new opportunities, further education, and a successful transition home. To learn more about the Mission Continues and be a part of the challenge, visit missioncontinues.org. Box College Football is presented by Frost Brewed Coors Light, the game's most refreshing beer. And by Mazda, we believe if it's not worth driving, it's not worth building. It's still under construction, the George Bush Library, which is right on the other side of Gerald J. Ford Stadium. Well, the fans love the hill here. Second down, the temporary Hope seats right behind them, but it didn't take the kids' sliding path away. I wish they'd have put the library where the parking garage is, and the parking <laughs> garage where they build the library. <laughs> it's a long walk, huh? Yeah, like a mile to get from the parking garage to the actual stadium. And here is Texas A&M with the football. Second down and 10. Ball at the SMU 43-yard line. Manziel looking. Dumps it short on the coverage. Right back to the line of scrimmage is Nate Askew. Maybe picking up one on the play. The junior out of Madison High School in San Antonio, Texas. His first reception of the year. And really impressed with Kenneth Acker, the cornerback from SMU. He's really competed today. You know, fought through a pick right there. Sure-handed tackle by the corner. This is the eighth play of the drive. Pressure on Manziel. Spins away. Looks. Fires. Caught. First down and then some. It'll be six for Texas A&M. <laughs> 42 yards for Kenrick McNeil. What a job by Houdini Manziel. I told you at the open, in the open, I said this kid, you know, could be one of those transcendent players that just doesn't come along that often. I mean, the strength to get out of that, the awareness to keep his head upfield. I mean, the excitement level, if you're a skilled player, of playing with a quarterback like this who's going to give you opportunities on a consistent basis to make plays. If he really just continues to improve his and work at his craft, the sky's the limit for how successful he can be. Well, Bertolette had one extra point blocked. This one's good. Marcus Hunt was not able to get a hand on it. Kendrick McNeil out of Spring, Texas. 
first touchdown catch of the year, the fourth of his career, but all set up by number two. Support the puck. Do I have to tell you this? And we're getting killed on the board. Oh. This is your yeah. territory, Grimson. Do your job. Grimson. Hello? Oh, hi, honey. What? Al? All right. Do you get see bitsy spider? Climbed up the water spout. Down came the rain and washed the spider out. Out came the sun and dried up all the rain. And the itsy bitsy spider climbed up the spout again. I love you, Daddy. I love you too, sweetheart. I magic in a young girl's heart. Hey, it's my girl. Daughter. Love. Pass it on. A message from the Foundation for a Better Life. One of the areas still maturing in an adolescent brain is the prefrontal cortex. So when we take drugs, we alter key motivational circuits, changing the wiring needed for the cognitive function of the brain. Until we can't totally deal with things like memory, thinking things out, and even learning stuff. The signs are there. So is our help. Visit the partnership at drugfree.org for practical advice on coping with teen drug use. This week on Fox NFL Sunday, Eli and the Giants look to bounce back against the Bucks. It's another great slate of NFL action, only on Fox. Coors Light says don't get flagged for breaking the law. It's a cold, hard fact. 21 means 21. So keep yourself and your friends in the game. And there's Johnny Manziel on the left-hand side. Kenrick McNeil on the right-hand side. 42 yards. It capped an eight-place, 79-yard drive, 231. Four touchdown drives, accumulated time, six minutes and one second. Not too bad. Manziel, of course, orally committed to Oregon, but he said he was concerned about how much it would cost his parents to come out and see him. And he couldn't hunt and fish with his grandfather, Big Paul. So that's why he decided to go to Texas A&M. Parents actually moved down to the Bryan College Station area. Lofton and Horace Richardson set to receive this, and again, it'll be out of the end zone. Let's go to... Let's take a look at Johnny Manziel again. The strength, the lower body strength, Ron, to fight off Taylor Reed. The awareness, and you see the athleticism? He was off balance. Mm -hmm. He knew he needed to find a way to concoct his body so that he could get enough velocity on the ball to get it to Kenrick McNeil. I mean, if you're a wide receiver at Texas a and you just could never quit. You just got to right. work that scramble drill because the young quarterback just finds a way to extend plays, and he, he's doing a great job of getting his guys the football once he gets outside of the pocket. Now he's able to improvise the way a quarterback in this offense needs to improvise. And talking to Cliff Kingsbury saying, you know, you want to pull him back a little bit, but you don't want to take away that instinctiveness that he does have. Now SMU needs to get on the board. Low snap. Gilbert picks it up, fires who completes to Thompson. And a penalty flag, I think, came in. Devontae Harris, the true freshman out of up the road in Mesquite, Texas, on the coverage, and he's going to be flagged. Yeah, he's telling us it was over everybody's head. Pass interference, number one on the defense. Penalty 15 yards from the previous spot. First down. Well, Devontae Harris, son of Rod Harris, Texas A&M wide receiver. 
former Texas State of wide receiver. You know, I'll say this, cornerbacks and safeties are the worst actors in football. <laughs> If you, want, as a true if, if you want to look guilty, you throw your hands up. Yeah. Like I didn't do anything. The Bill Lambeer. <laughs> you know, the Bill Lambeer look there. Well, that pushes the ball up to the 40-yard line. Press coverage now by one of the corners of a &M. Gilbert, the quick out. Caught another first down. Keenan Holman on the reception. That is his fourth catch today. Tony Hurd. Playing nickel back in that instance put a lick on Keenan Holman. Man, he covered a lot of ground. You know, uh, Tony Hurd Jr. reminds me of Who's that? Levante David. There you go. From Nebraska last year. Same kind of player, sideline to sideline. He does it from the safety position instead of linebacker. But I mean, this kid's gonna make a lot of plays for this Aggie defense. Let's see if SMU can sustain this drive. Gilbert looking, and his receiver fell down. Pass intended for Darius jo uh, Johnson. Like he tripped right as the ball was getting to him. SMU looking for their first points of the afternoon for June Jones. He says, I know we're not a BCS busting team yet, but he likes the guys on this team. On second down, here comes some pressure. They set up a screen to Zach Line. Running room inside the 30, cuts back. Down to the 20-yard line, Zach Line. Biggest play of the afternoon for SMU, 30 yards. And he has that ability, looking like Peyton Hill is from two years ago in the open field. They've run a couple of screens, been trying to find ways to get Zach Lyons to that second level, and he makes Tony Hurd, who I was just talking about, miss in the open field. I mean, he's a very dynamic player. He's a player who I think is going to be even better at the next level. I agree. You know, he's the kind of player that the NFL team can really take and utilize his skill set to help them better. He's got four receptions today. The little look in screen. Gary Dieter, the true freshman. Maybe picks up six on the play. Derek Dieter, this young man out of South Bend, Indiana. Great catch versus Baylor. Watching him in practice on Thursday, every ball that goes up, he has the mentality that it's mine. He's not fast when you watch him. He's not necessarily quick, but this young man's got a great future in this offense at SMU. And we've got a Mustang down. And Gottschalk is down, didn't play against Stephen F. Austin. He had an arm injury. Yeah, a number of players have gone down today. And Ben Gotts talk is a part of that, you know, inexperienced Aggie offensive line. And you think last year, Ryan, they lost 158 starts yeah. of experience from that offensive line last year. Kevin Beecham, the left tackle from last year, seventh round draft pick by the Pittsburgh Steelers. And you saw when he got up, he was straightening out that arm. That's him right down there, right in the middle. So they can, 72. They're already thin. They can look forward to, to, to losing to the guys in that front. Chris Weeks has checked in, a three-star recruit, a redshirt freshman. And it's second down and about five. And that'll be good enough for another first down. Zach Live starting to feel it now. I guess when you're a player like Zach Lyon, you tell your teammates, put it on my back. I've got it. That's right, and he's a guy, if you can get him to that second level, I mean, he can make a lot of positive things happen. Because he's big at 230 pounds, very tough to bring down, but he's agile, quick feet, able to make little guys miss in space. And it is now first and goal for the Mustangs, their best drive and deepest penetration today. Lyon gets popped as he gets down to about the seven. Now, June Jones' dilemma for the remainder of this game and for next week is how many hits do you want exactly. Zach Line to endure, knowing that you do have your conference schedule coming. Well, they got next week off, which probably... Well, then TCU comes to town. And, That's right. You know, Gary Patterson is known for having elite defense itself. Well, SMU beat TCU last year. 
They did in a very exciting football game. Second down and goal from the seven. Gilbert looks right, nobody there. Miscommunication. You can see Keenan Holman telling Jeremy Johnson, you should have cut behind me. Did you see the hand signals there at the end? And he's telling Keenan Holman, you've got to get up the field. You've got to get a little more vertical. And watch this. Then he goes. So that uh, Jeremy Johnson doesn't have to run the hump. Right there. You want Jeremy Johnson's defender to run the hump, not Jeremy Johnson. Now it's third down and goal. Ball still on the seven. See man-to-man -man coverage up here. If I'm Garrett Gilbert, I'm looking at that matchup. He looks the other way instead. Darius Johnson not going to get in. They'll mark him out at about the four-yard line. And I do think that's the one aspect that's missing from this SMU offense. If teams are going to play you man-to-man -man coverage and you go three by one run that single receiver yeah. you've got to have confidence that we can go to him and win because it's a one-on-one -on -one matchup no help anywhere not underneath not over the top you've got to be able to take advantage of those situations now the fans are booing they want SMU to go for it they marked it down at the three yard line instead it'll be a field goal attempt Chase Hofer missed from 48 yards earlier They mark this at the 10 and a whistle. Yeah, it's delay of game against the Mustangs. There was a little indecision when the field goal team came out. Delay of game. Offense. Five more penalty. Down remains four. Push that ball back. And now it'll be marked at the 15-yard line, a 25-yard attempt for Chase Hover. Didn't miss from this distance all of last year or so far this season. Good snap, good hold. And SMU gets on the board. Good drive by the Mustangs, and it's 27-3, Texas A&M. This is the computer ICU. It's what happens to your computer when it gets infected, slows down, and crashes. And if you don't do something, your computer could wind up here in the computer graveyard. But it could be saved with MyCleanPC.com. Is your computer running slow? Are you frustrated with error messages, blue screens, computer freezes, and crashes? Then go to MyCleanPC.com for your free diagnosis today. Then just activate the MyCleanPC.com software to fix it in minutes. And computer specialists are available while you're online. The best thing about MyCleanPC.com was it had a free diagnosis. My computer is 100% faster. You know immediately what the problem is, and the problem is solved right then and there. Download your free diagnosis today at MyCleanPC.com. Monday to Friday on Minuto para Ganar, the forecast is rain. And it will be pouring money. I mean, the stars are blazing on the show. That is the perfect place to hang with friends and family for summer fun. Raining cash, blazing stars equals TV's hottest shows. Minuto para Ganar from New York, Monday to Friday, only on Mundo Fox. Wow. College already. <laughs> yeah. We gotta go. This is Kevin Frazier, and welcome back to Fox College Football. Due to time constraints, we now move ahead in our broadcast. Three and a half left to play here in the third. On third and three, 
Gilbert looks left, looks right, and he is going to be dropped. Third sack of the ball game for Texas A&M. Boy, the pocket broke down, and you knew he was going to get whacked in the back. And, and Garrett kind of has to have that clock in his head. You know, it's pretty good protection initially. You know, he goes his first option. It's not there. He gets to his second. Now, right about now, you have to start feeling that, okay, things are breaking down and to get rid of the football. Demontre Moore with his second sack of the day, fifth for the ball game, forcing a and or SMU with their ninth punt of the contest. And that's his fifth on the season. He's on pace to put up some big numbers. Oh. On the run, it is Harris. He gets away. The punter to beat. Oh, Dustin. <laughs> You're not going to live that down when Chase Hover's the one who knocks you down. <laughs> A line drive point that he does a good job of fielding. And, you know, Dustin Harris reminds me of a track runner. He has a stride, that long, graceful stride of a guy that runs track. He's really fast. Now, Demontre Moore, the 6'4", 250-pound junior. He's gotten bigger and stronger. Was the joker position last year. Coaches said you're better with your hand in the dirt. He's proving them correct. Manziel's pass is complete, still on his feet. Henrik McNeil again. And to nitpick Johnny Manziel just a little bit, he makes the completion to Kenrick McNeil, but he should have thrown in the football two counts earlier. You know, just little things like that. As he gets more comfortable in this system and starts to really understand timing, anticipation, I mean, it's going to be exciting to watch this young quarterback play. Well, they picked up 14 on that play. And yeah, we've got another penalty flag. Illegal. And they'll back it up again. Another penalty on Texas A&M. Their sixth of the day. And 15 for the Aggies, just outside the 15-yard line. So they have first and 10 just outside the 15-yard line. They can get a first down, but it's almost at the goal line. Molina stood up as he gets close to the original line of scrimmage. Every time a play ends, A&M immediately sends in three or four new players. They're shuffling players in and out, which is going to wear down any team. Molina goes out. Trey Williams comes in. A little slip screen. Thomas Johnson. He gets into it down to about the 11-yard line. That'll be his second catch of the day. Pick up a two. And Thomas Johnson is from right here at Skyline High School in Dallas, one of the more prominent high school football programs in America, trying to get the young man from action back in his hometown. And Zell looking for six again. Touchdown, Texas A&M. Watch a coup with his second touchdown reception. It was good for 11 yards. There was a penalty on the play, but it was a free play for Texas A&M. And that's a subtle aspect of that decision. A lot of people overlooked. The young quarterback understood that it was a free play. I'm going to take a shot, go into the end zone, give my guy a chance to make a play. Uzomo Wachiku out of Allen, Texas, just up the road. Home of a new $59 million high school football stadium, I might add, Allen, Texas. <laughs> Penalty is declined. Pretty nice field, oh. by the way. A lot of pressure on the high school coach, though. Yeah, slightly. <laughs> Kevin Sumlin likes having games up here because he knows this ground is fertile for football players in the Dallas-Fort Worth area. So Wachiku, who didn't have a catch in the Florida games, got a couple today and a couple of touchdowns this afternoon. I'll say this, Ron. Being from Florida, we think we invented the game of football as a <laughs> today, but 
I do have a healthy level of respect for yeah. football at every level in the state of Texas. That high school program do a great job of preparing kids and, and having kids that have high skill sets and elite talents. And Bertolette will try to keep it away from Marcus Hunt of SMU. And he does. Four plays, 24 yards, 132, and it ended up with our Brown hand center. Great hands of the game. This is a great job of high point in the football, and he finishes the play by getting both feet down. That would have been good yeah. at the next level. Jeremy Gray just seemed like he lost sight of where he was on that play. Jeremy Gray probably thinks Texas A&M is playing with 14 guys. He's like, Coach, <laughs> <laughs> we can't cover really? them all. <laughs> Talented wide receiver core. Wachaku, the senior. Wachaku had zero catches coming into a day, coming into today. But again, a guy that you know has made a lot of big plays for this Aggie team. 12 total touchdowns in his career. Yeah. Got Ryan Swope, who's been a big play guy for this Aggie team. You add in Mike Evans, who's kind of raw but's developing. Young freshman receiver Thomas Johnson, who they're bringing along. I mean, they really do have a lot of talent at the skill positions on this Aggie program. And Kevin Sumlin said as much in talking yeah. to him. He thinks from a speed and athleticism standpoint, they're where they need to be. They're going to continue to build more depth and get better. He said it's those big guys that we got to continue to right. go out and look for big guys that can run, you know, but also have size and strength. Well, he brought over a great strength and conditioning coach and Larry Jackson from Houston. Plus, they have the $9 million development center down in College Station. Preparing for the SEC season. That is Horace Richardson, a true freshman. And Burlett set to kick it away. He's done a nice job on kickoffs. SMU has had a whole lot to work with. Is going to be a short kick. Richardson from about the 13. And he is swarmed over at about the 23 yard line, only 13 yards on the return. 51 seconds to play here in quarter number three. They were expecting a record crowd. I'm not sure they got it here at Gerald J. Ford Stadium. A lot of Aggie fans. In fact, they probably outnumbered SMU fans in this game. And a good look at that. I like the end zone. Though. The fans that are sitting on the grass. Yeah. It just looks so much more comfortable than one of those hard <laughs> seats, you know? I'm with you on that. SMU takes over on the 27-yard line. Jared Gilbert goes back to work. Looking deep for Derek Thompson. What I saw there, too, we have a penalty flag throw. Derek Thompson slowed up on that route. Then he saw the ball was coming to him, and he tried to kick it into another gear. Some of it might have had a little bit to do with the fact that Devontae Harris tried to yeah. tug and pull on the, the jersey of Derek. Well, that is the second pass interference on Devontae Harris. Uh, that's it. Number one on the defense. Penalty 15 yards from the previous spot. Automatic first down. Well, you can see, Kevin, I'll, I'll lip read it for you. You said that's awful. <laughs> here it is again. And see, he was kind of just, then all of a sudden he goes, oh, yeah, here it is. It was bumping and shoving, but when you're a quarterback, and put, take me back a few years, when you see a, a receiver not giving it everything he did, did you say something good? I did, but again, it's a delicate situation. If you, if you notice the Chicago Bears, Green Bay. Gilbert takes a while up, passes incomplete. The Chicago Bear Green Bay Packer game from Thursday night. Right. And Jake Cutler, a little, I thought, too over-emotional with his offensive lineman. As Ben Gotts talk is, is. I think DeMontre got him on this one. And that's what you call a bull rush. Yes, it is, by a bull. Couple of sacks already for more. Played defensive line in high school, Devontae Moore did. But I'll say this when it comes yeah. to communicating with your players, yeah. I think you have to know your guys. Some guys respond well to, to, to tough love, some guys you got a pat on the back. 
But I've always said this. If you're the quarterback and you're not playing well, mm -hmm. you can't correct anyone else. Oh, that's true, And, and Garrett Gilbert hadn't played well today, so, I mean, the last thing that, that he can right. do is go and, and correct someone else. I don't think he has that personality, you know, spending time with him over the last couple of days. But sometimes it's needed. Oh, you know, yeah, yeah. But I think you develop those habits, effort, energy, execution. Those habits are developed in practice. Like, as a quarterback, that's where you start, you know, that leadership responsibility. They have to start in practice, how we approach it. You know, guys have to know that Every time the ball is snapped and it's a pass call that you have the ability to get them the football, that there's a potential that they can get the football. You know, that's all part of growing up as an offense, getting to know each other. But it's going to start with Garrett Gilbert's performance. I mean, until he plays better, you know, he's not really going to be able to lead. That's right. You know, I've been a lot of football teams, and if, if you aren't performing, you can't lead. Well, Ben Gottschalk is up, limping off the field, and June Jones will probably bring in Chris Weeks again to play that left tackle spot. I tell you, I don't know who could stop Demontre Moore right now. Yeah, he's playing at a high level. Oh, he, and he he didn't mind, you know, moving down from uh, a, what was a state, essentially a linebacker and, spot. And, and you see why? Yeah, eight, eight and a half sacks in 2011, which is a really good year. He only has five through two games so far in 2012. <laughs> and it is second down. Zach Line gets the first down, breaks into the secondary, down to the. 38-yard line. Pickup of 22 on the play. Sean Porter finally had to corral him. And this is a good job of seeing the seam and hitting the seam right up in the hole by Zach Line. And first and 10 now for the Mustangs. And June Jones knows the talent that he has at running back. He knows that Zach's an elite guy capable of doing a lot of things and, and as they get into the conference where they schedule I just think he's going to be more productive I think so too pass complete to Keenan Holman and that'll be the last play of quarter number three he gets down to the 25 yard line they'll move the chains and Jude Jones and company they head to the fourth quarter trailing 41 to 3 Wie Fluta! Wie Fluta! Enni Burjan. Verändering ar u en finklit. Fluta! SXX. Like the world's most refreshing beer. The Fox presents. Mi nombre es Pedro Pablo Leon Jaramillo. The new season of the most acclaimed Spanish television series. El Capo. Every weeknight, an all new episode on Mundo Fox. Do you know what it means to have someone's back? To have another life depend on you and only you? Where your vision, your defense, your support is the very thing that is the difference in their life or death. This feeling is known in the truest form by those that willingly protect you and me every day. In the military, got your six means I've got your back. They've got our six. It's time we got theirs. Through jobs, education, housing, and more, we can support returning military veterans and their families. To find out more information, go to gotyour6.org. They've got our six. Now it's time that we have theirs. I've got your six. 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 That which I can't do. That which I can't do. I must do. I must do. And by the grace of God. By the grace of God. I will do. I will do.
the first 15 minutes of this game, it was a defensive struggle, 0-0. Then Johnny Manziel and company took over 490 yards to 225 for SMU. Zach Klein has been the main offensive weapon for the Mustangs. Garrett Gilbert has had a tough afternoon. He's taken a couple of big hits. Line gets down to about the 24-yard line. Jonathan Mathis wrapping him up. Let's check in with Desmond Purnell again. Ron, you got to love Zach Line. Sean mentioned it earlier. He's big enough to block defensive ends, but can still make the little guys miss. As a matter of fact, June Jones told me he's been the prototype back for us, and the numbers support that. Zach Line has 16 100-yard games for SMU. That's only second to Hall of Famer Eric Dickerson. That's pretty good. Gilbert swings it out and immediately hits Avante Harris coming up to lower the boom. You know, picking up with Zach Lyon. Let's take, let's take a look at that play again, though. Johnson was hung out to dry on this. And this is a true freshman trying to make up for those two defensive pass interference, pass interference penalties that he's gotten. But look at the emotion that this Aggie defense yeah. is still playing with. Like, they're taking pride in the fact they haven't given up a touchdown today. That's right. That enthusiasm, you know, that energy, that effort level is something that carries on into the season. Well, Jeremy Johnson missed his block, and it gives the Mustangs a third down and 12 from the 27. Zach Live looking, cuts back, gets down to the 20-yard line, and wrestled out of bounds. Jonathan Mathis on the stop. You know, getting back to Zach Lyon, uh, with him on Thursday, and I said, do you realize your name has been mentioned along with guys like Eric Dickerson and Reggie Dupard? <laughs> and he looked at me and he went, no. <laughs> I mean, it was, an unass it, wasn't a, it was an unassuming no, and he was serious. What a nice young man. I wouldn't mention him and, and Eric Dickerson in the no. same breath, but I will say this. He's done enough to get in the back of the media guide at SMU. That's exactly right. And it is fourth down. The Mustangs going for it. Garrett Gilbert pumps, looks, throws. I think it was intended for Darius Johnson. Communication was not there. Tony Hurd was on the coverage. The communication that's so essential in June Jones's offense has been missing for the majority of today. Well, I'll just be honest with you. You know, I just don't think Garrett Gilbert's played well. You know, he's got to he's got to go back and evaluate. You know, this performance and figure out how to get better. I mean, this ball is not really thrown to anyone. I mean, there's Johnson on the outside of the defender. He didn't win inside. You know, but what I was saying about Zach Lyon when I was talking about the back of the media guy, you know, names in the front of the media guy always change. Yeah. Guys graduate, guys leave. But if you do enough when you're at a university and you can get in the back of the media guy, it's going to be there forever. Well, okay. Jamail Showers has checked in at quarterback now, Sean, for Texas A&M. He was behind Ryan Tannehill last year, the sophomore out of Helene, Texas. Spent time in the offseason trying to fine-tune his release, he said, and working out a little bit of footwork. Played four games last season. And the number's on in. And he looks to scramble. Fires pass complete. Out of bounds at about the 25-yard line. Malcolm Kennedy on the reception. And I've obviously got a enroll Johnny Manziel in the Sean King school of playing quarterback. How's that? Rule number one, never come out the game under any circumstances. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. I like that. He doesn't have a choice, though, when you're a redshirt freshman. I had an agreement with, with Coach Tommy Bowden and Rich Rodriguez. We give you everything we got every day in practice. On Saturday, we're not coming out the game. Eight different receivers <laughs> have caught passes for the Aggies. Complete. Nate Askew. He gets up over the 40 to the 41-yard line, a 17-yard pickup. You know, I just had this thing, Ron. I never wanted them to see anybody else at quarterback as long as I was at Tulane. There you go. I like that. Trey Williams trying to mix things up. A lot of times Texas A&M will run the ball up the middle. What they're trying to do is keep those linebackers honest. And just when you think they're going to run, Boom, they get you. And that's a, a, a fundamental staple of most spreads is it's called a box count. Mm -hmm. You want to see all those outside linebackers trying to be involved in one game. And if they are, you can throw all kind of bubble screens. Pass complete again to Askew. Spins away, still on his feet. 
inside the 35 down to the 34 yard line. And that's a true freshman Thomas Johnson making some plays from right here at Skyline High School in Dallas. He's got a lot of friends and family yeah. here at the game. Getting a chance to play as a true freshman. You gotta love that. They moved the chains again. Dale Showers looks pretty good so far. Williams. And that comment right there, Ron, is why if I'm Johnny Menzel, Jamel Showers doesn't get in the game. <laughs> you know, and it was funny because you go back to spring practice, you know, we're not sure how close the competition was, but they didn't make a decision to laughter spring. So obviously Johnny was felt uh, Jamel and Matt Jokel, the sophomore out of Arlington, Texas, all in heated competition. I'll shoot Manziel a tweet. Yeah. <laughs> Here's Williams. They dump it off to him. He gets down to about the 31-yard line. Penalty flag is on the field. Five yards on the reception. Holding, number 75 on offense. Penalty, 10 yards, previous spot. We played the down. And if you could hear Jake Matthews, as the, the referee opened up his mic, he said, oh my goodness, my hand was right under my set. Like yeah. these two tackles, the one thing that Cliff Kingsbury said about him is they approach their job like pros. They take a lot of pride in their performance, and Jake doesn't like holding calls on his resume. Well, they get it again to Williams. He takes a wallop as he gets down to the 30-yard line. And it's going to be 15 added on for roughing the passer. There you go. Well, the actual catch will run 20 yards. Boy, you just can't get frustrated in games like this. A foul. Number 93 on the defense. Roughing the passer. Aaron Davis. 15 yards from the end of the run for staff. And that was not good, and I'm sure Aaron Davis is going to hear about that. And it didn't have to be long before he heard about it. You love the effort. You hate the lack of discipline. You've got to learn how to play exactly. with disciplined effort. 10-20 to play in the ball game. Williams spinning, thrown down at the 15-yard line, no gain on the play. And you saw Stephon Sanders right there on the screen. A lot of people know that Texas A&M has that 12th man. Showers looks, throws inside the five, down to the three-yard line, Malcolm Kennedy. Pickup of 11. AM looking to punch it in again. Williams bowling the pack ahead. Touchdown, Texas AM. And Jamel Sowers looked more efficient running the Aggie offense than Johnny Manziel is yeah. looking today. I'll send a tweet after the game, Ron. Never, there ever, you go. ever, ever come out of the football game. And the freshman Trey Wilt Williams gets his first touchdown as a member of Texas A&M. Taylor Burleway for the Very impressive 80-yard drive that took him 10 plays. Bertolette for the extra point. Trey Williams with the touchdown. Texas A&M has opened up a big lead against the Mustangs of SMU.
devotion. Pass it on. Long before my football days, I got teased at school a lot just because of how I looked. Many students are afraid to even go to school because they're fearful of being bullied. One out of every four kids is bullied just for being different. Look around. We're all different, but that's what makes a great team. Follow our lead here at Fox Sports. Be a leader and stand up for others. Because you know what we do to bullying? Yeah! We stop it out! Fox College Football is presented by Academy Sports and Outdoors. Right stuff, low price every day. And by Sewell Automotive, a century of inspired service. And SMU fans haven't had a whole lot to cheer about this afternoon. AM fans have had a chance to cheer about a lot of things. Yeah! There you go. Somebody Take tell that couple that they're winning. There is Camille Showers on the sideline. Engineered a nice 80-yard, 10-play drive. Took him 336. At the goal line, the ball is loose, and they're just going to fall on it. Boy, that is, you just can't make those kind of mistakes. And Horace Richardson finally just had a fall on it. And the Mustangs will take over on their own five-yard line. And Jared Gilbert will stay in. Might as well, non-conference game. And you're getting the reps. He needs to work. Yeah, getting the reps you need. Gilbert looks, throws the deep out. Darius Johnson on the reception. Gets over the 30-yard line, corralled finally at the 35-yard line. Gain of 29 on the play. And I think that's what's really frustrating for Coach Jones is you see what he's yeah. capable of. Now, this is an excellent corner route by Darius Johnson. Ball's still a little late, but he does get it there with velocity when he decides to throw it. You know, he has the ability. He does. It's just about putting everything together. Now Derek Thompson goes wide to the left. Nine minutes to play in the ball game. And he did the right thing. Zach Line had two players around him. He had Gavin Stansberry and also Spencer Neal, Neely. And Jonathan Mathis. You can see he's been sacked three times today. One interception. That doesn't include all the hits he's taken today. Well, I'll say this about that SMU offensive line. For the most part, they've done a good job. Well, they've given up some sacks, but it hadn't just been constant pressure, you know, where Garrett's getting right. hit every time he drops back. On second and ten. That should have been caught. Incomplete. That's intended for Darius Joseph. Darius Joseph, the intended receiver. You, you've got to catch that ball. You do. And the redshirt freshman wasn't able to corral it. Gilbert now completing just 50% of his passes, 21 of 42, 189 yards. And because I played the position, Ryan, you know, I'm tough on quarterbacks. And, you know, if I'm coaching Garrett up, get the ball there quicker. You know, yeah. once you see that flat defender expand, you know that's where your read takes you. Get him the football quicker. And I'm showing blitz. SMU runs it. I like Zach Lyon. I do too. <laughs> Every play, he plays hard. He gets close to the first down. They'll mark him down at the 44. It's just an effort play. And that's all him. Yeah. Texas A&M brings a corner cat. The guy's unblocked. He sees it, stays inside of his blocks. Blake McJunkin did have a good block on that play. Fourth down and about 
to five inches to go. And they'll be over center, and SMU will call a timeout. 8 4 to play in the ball game. AM leading the Mustangs. Mustangs face it for town. Support the puck. Do I have to tell you this? And we're getting killed on the board. Hello. This is your yeah. territory, Grimson. Do your job. Grimson. Hello? Oh, hi, honey. What? Al? All right. The itsy bitsy spider. Climbed up the water spout. Down came the rain and washed the spider out. Out came the sun and dried up all the rain. And the itsy bitsy spider climbed up the spout again. I love you, Daddy. I love you too, sweetheart. Hey, it's my girl. Daughter. Love. Pass it on. A message from the Foundation for a Better Life. Get ready for Fox College Football. It's an SEC Conference USA showdown as Ole Miss clashes with Tulane. Fox College Football, next Saturday. SMU trails 48-3. to They're facing a fourth down and about six inches. But we want to remind you, a full day of college football action continues later today right here on this channel. North Texas looks to pull off the upset as they take on 15th-ranked Kansas State. They're looking to stay unbeaten. Our coverage of college football continues all day long right here on this channel. And it's Dan McCarty of North Texas, the head coach there, reuniting with Bill Snyder of Kansas State. Of course, Dan, the former coach at Iowa State. They've done battle before. Those kids are having a blast. Gilbert just sneaks it over, and that'll be good enough for the first down as he gets over the 45-yard line. And it's going to be, June Jones is going to be very upset. They're going to get a legal procedure yeah. because Derek Thompson did not break the huddle and hustle and get lined up. And now they'll face fourth down and six. They'll do it again. And that, some of that's on Garrett Gilbert. As a quarterback, you've got to know where your guys are. Offense never got set for one second. Five-yard penalty, fourth down. But that's something they practice. Yeah. You know, and, and, and Derek, who's up top, he never gets set. He's looking at that wide out. And a little that's on him, you know, not being, yeah. having enough urgency. But again, as a quarterback, that's something that you can see. You know, you hold a snap count yeah. a second longer, and you guys shift up the first down. Well, instead, they'll have to kick it away. Very costly mistake. Harris from the 14. And they lead up to the 24-yard line. 43 on the kick, 10 on the return. This is the computer ICU. It's what happens to your computer when it gets infected, slows down, and crashes. And if you don't do something, your computer could wind up here in the computer graveyard. But it could be saved with MyCleanPC.com. Is your computer running slow? Are you frustrated with error messages, blue screens, computer freezes, and crashes? Then go to MyCleanPC.com for your free diagnosis today. Then just activate the MyCleanPC.com software to fix it in minutes. And computer specialists are available while you're online. The best thing about my 